Hi chemists, uh, next video in the polymers chain, <laughs> uh, the polymer chain of videos, um, what we need to talk about before we hit the second type of polymerization, the condensation polymerization, if I can say it right. We've just talked about in the last two, addition polymerization. Um, but in condensation polymerization, I need, we need this kind of knowledge of something called copolymers. So I've added a slide in here. Uh, copolymers are polymers that are made up of more than one type of monomer. So not all the monomers are identical. The easiest way to do this, and the only way we're going to extend it because it's mostly like this, is when you have two different types of monomers. It's the most common. Okay. The benefit of copolymers are that you can take and you're combining the properties of the two different polymers that each individual monomer would make. Okay, words. So, um, putting it into words, I, I like diagrams better. Okay, look at the right here. Okay, I've got two different monomers. I've got the longer orange and the shorter blue one there. Say the longer orange could polymerize with itself, we'd have a long chain of oranges and it'd have certain properties. Or the blues would polymerize with themselves and we'd have a long chain of blues and it'd have a different set of properties. What we can do is make a, a copolymer of both of them and get kind of like a rough mixture of those two, okay? The properties of the two. So we can kind of hedge our bets and get something between them, roughly. It's not halfway in between, not an exact like that. But that's why we make copolymers, okay? We get polymers with different properties that we can control a bit more. So here, I've got my two monomers. I've got the orange and the blue, and we can make a copolymer where they're just alternating orange, blue, orange, blue, ongoing, ongoing. Um, another thing that I can do with monomer, sorry, with polymers and also copolymers is I can also put covalent bonding between strands. And we talked about that a bit earlier. Um, so here I've got, a, I've got an atom or a molecule between strands, covalently bonding them together. So it's not only relying on intermolecular forces between two strands, it's got covalent bonding. It's extra, extra strong between them. So these are probably polymers that are very, very strong, high strength, high tensile. Okay. So an example of a copolymer, high impact polystyrene is actually styrene monomer and it's copolymerized with butadiene, okay? So two different types of monomers, we're forming a copolymer or high, poly high impact polystyrene is the name. So it makes a polymer desirable for battery cases and shoe heels, okay? Synthetic rubber is also a copolymer of styrene and butadiene, okay? Different properties, and it's also been cross-linked, what we're talking about here with sulfur, okay? So in tires, it's often called vulcanization. So in tires, it's a synthetic a copolymer between styrene and butadiene, and they've produced strands, and then what they do is they introduce sulfur and cause it to cross-link between strands and it makes it extra strong. High temperature resistance and stuff like that. So you get something like that. That is the rubber tire. And because it's sulfur in between, vulcanization is often the term used. Vulcanized rubber is uh, rubber strands, which is the copolymer styrene and but uh, butadiene cross-linked with sulfur. Okay, gives us a little bit of foundation here because we need it to talk about the second type of polymerization, which is called not addition polymerization, but condensation polymerization. Okay, so syllabus point, model and compare the structure, properties and uses, structure, properties, uses, of condensation polymers, so we need to learn about what's condensation polymerization, and we need two examples, nylon and polyesters, okay? Condensation polymerization occurs when the functional group of two monomers 
two adjacent monomers, they have functional groups of then, so arrangements of atoms in a specific way, and those functional groups react to form a new bond and join and link. So they're the link. And there's a small byproduct, and it's usually water. So if condensation reactions and condensation polymerization produces a byproduct, most of the time it's water, it can be other things too. Therefore, the name condensation water is left over. So a series of condensation reactions that, re that rea result in a polymer chain is condensation polymerization. Common synthetic condensation polymers are polyesters and nylons, the ones that we need to learn about here. There are some biological ones though. Okay, common ones like polysaccharides, like starches and cellulose and proteins as well. Rope, <laughs> example of a, a good use of these. So condensation polymerization, I've got my daughter's uh, Duplo out again. And what I've got here is a monomer and there's three sections to it. There's the red main section, and on one end there's the little bit of green and the little bit of orange on the opposite ends. And so two monomers come together, green to orange, and what happens are that you get a reaction between the two ends, you join the two monomers up, and you have the green-orange coming away as the condensation molecule. Okay, and then a green comes up to the new orange, and you get another condensation molecule coming up and so what ends up happening is you get a long long chain and for every join you get a little molecule coming away so for every join you get a molecule all right so now we know what condensation reaction is and we've modeled it we can start to look at these examples nylon and polyesters and talk about structure properties and use okay polyesters condensation polymers that result in a chain of repeating ester linkages. Okay, we've learned about less esters. Um, and they form from the reaction between a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. Remember, that's what formed an ester. Therefore, monomers must have alcohol groups and carboxylic groups for this to occur. Okay, there's two different ways this can occur either from one monomer or two monomers, okay? Two monomers must be a copolymer. So, if you're forming a polyester from a monomer, it must be a molecule that has both an alcohol group on one end and on the other a carboxylic acid, okay? An example of this is the molecule 2-hydroxypropanoic acid, okay? So, here's one of them here. We've got at one end a carboxylic acid and the other end an alcohol. And so when they react with other molecules, you get them coming together and the alcohol at one end will form a link with the carboxylic acid on the other. You get these two bonds cut and you get water coming out. So the H2O coming out. And so you form these ester linkages between these monomers and you get a condensation polymerization. So you get this backbone that has this property where you have the oxygen in there and then the two and then oxygen and the two but you have this methyl branch there because that methyl branch was there in the first place and you have the carbonyl in the backbone too. That doesn't go anywhere. So I've had four molecules up here and so they've all joined together, they're polymerized. Because there's four molecules, there has been three links. And so therefore I have three molecules of water left over. So I start with the monomer, 2-hydroxypropanoic acid. Remember the, propan the carboxylic acid has higher priority than the alcohol. So it goes at the end of the name and the alcohol as a prefix is a hydroxy. So hydroxy in the two position and the propanoic acid on one end. So what we form is just simply, remember we don't change the name of the uh, monomer. It's just poly and in brackets to keep it, to keep it nice. And, it's just poly 2 hydroxypropanoic acid. So that's how we form a polyester from one monomer where it has an alcohol group on one end 
and a carboxylic acid on the other. The other way to form a polyester is a copolymer between two monomers, okay? And so therefore one of the monomer must, must have two alcohol groups on each side. So it's a diol. And the other monomer must have a carboxylic acid on both ends. So it's a dicarboxylic acid. So a polyester can form as a copolymer between a diol and a dicarboxylic acid monomer. An example of that is PET, polyethylene terephthalate. Its monomers are a diol, 1,2-ethan diol, and a dicarboxylic acid or terephthalic acid. Let's look at their structure here. Okay, here's your diol. That's ethane with an alcohol or on each end. So 1,2-ethan diol, the old name for that is ethylene glycol. Okay, that's one of the monomers. The other one here is terephthalic acid or 1,4-benzene dioxide dioic acid or it's got a benzene ring and it's got a carboxylic acid on opposite ends okay so we've got a diol and a dicarboxylic acid what ends up happening is they alternate one after the each other and they form a condensation reaction so here we've got a diol here we've got our dicarboxylic acid we break the alcohol OH and we break the CO bond on the carboxylic acid and there's our H2O dropping out. There's our H2O dropping out. And so for each link, you're getting a H2O dropping out and you're forming a polyester. And it's a polyester because look, there's the ester groups, okay? There's the linkages, the ester linkages. So PET is a thermoplastic, very easily melted and reshaped. It was one of the first plastics that was recyclable. Um, used for a variety of purposes, but most commonly known as soft drink and water bottles as PET. It has the recycling number, you know, the arrows that has the number one in them. Um, it can also be used to make fibers, so shredded and spun into long fibers to make clothing. Polyesters are easily damaged by acids or alkalis, yeah? So it's gonna break those est ester linkages. Even a dilute alkali will break the ester linkages in the chain, so not very chemical resistant at all. Breaking the fibers and making a hole in the garment, okay? So not very chemical resistant at all, but really good for holding water and uh, water-based solvents. Water-based solvents, um, sugar and water. <laughs> okay, couple examples. Terylene, which is a type of polyester, is a condensation polymer. You should know that if it says polyester anyway. Part of the structure of the polymer is shown. Look, they've given you a structure of it. And they're asking you, what are the two monomers? So they've given you a new condensation reaction, a polymer. And they're asking you for the two monomers, okay? So it would have been formed by a dicarboxylic acid and a diol. There's the dicarboxylic acid. So it's actually the one that we're just looking at, terylene, polyethylene terephthalate. That's exactly the same one, isn't it? So it's formed from the 1,2-ethan diol and the 1,4-benzendioic acid. Okay, look. The carbonyls are attached to the benzene. They don't take part in the reaction. Remember, it's the carbonyl, this bond here, that gets broken. So the monomer with the, um, with the benzene must have the carbonyls attached. So it can't be that one, and it can't be that one. So the monomer must be this one here, and that makes sense because they're both dicarboxylic acid with that one on there. They're both identical, okay? All right, so that must be the one. Look at this C, what's it going on about? <laughs> it hasn't even got a benzene ring in it. Oh, it did there, but no, that won't polym polymerize. Okay, um, the other end is the dicarboxylic, sorry, the 
diol, okay? So there's an alcohol on each side. That carbon, oxygen, carbon. So the oxygen, carbon, carbon. Oxygen, carbon, carbon, oxygen. That's good. That's a tick, okay? This one here is got a double bond in there. Now we're talking about condensation reactions. That's what you see in addition. So they're trying to confuse you. We don't need a double bond between the carbon and carbon. We're not talking about um, an addition reaction. We're talking about a condensation one. Look, there's one, two, ethan, diol, oxygen, carbon, carbon, oxygen. So the answer is D for this one. And it is PET, isn't it? Okay, here, look at this. They've done the opposite. They've given you the two condensation monomers and saying it'll form a condensation polymer and they're asking you for the condensation polymer. Um, the first thing that jumps out of me is, oh, um, looking at A, B, C, and D. A, C, and D are showing us the structure of a polymer. B is just a longer chain. It's not a polymer. So B can automatically go because they're not showing a polymer. Okay, remember when esterification happens, the, the carbonyl carbon to oxygen breaks, and then these oxygen hydrogen breaks on the alcohol, okay? So what we're going to form is the linkages between those. So we're going to start with an oxygen, it doesn't, this one starts with an oxygen, and then we're going to have the carbon CH2, 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 and then we're going to have the oxygen joined to the carbonyl, oxygen joined to the carbonyl, and then we're going to have the CH2, that's not going to change, and then we're going to have another carbonyl, and then the whole thing is going to repeat. So it's quite obvious that it's D. Let's look at the problems of C and A and see if we can identify uh, look at oxygen, oxygen in the double bond. Mm, no, that's not going to happen. That is no longer an ester, okay? So it's a polyester that we needed. Look, this is the problem too with this one. Look, we haven't got an ester in there. There's no oxygen in the chain. It's not an ester. Therefore, D. Okay. Should we call it quits there? No, this is another condensation polymer. Oh, it's a long one. I might stop the video there. And the next video, we can talk about polyamides, which is another type of uh, condensation polymer.